Today we will start the radiation from a accelerated charged particle. Last time using the covariant form of the wave equations we find that the uh, Green's function. Today first we will derive the uh, four vectors and uh, using the four vectors uh, four uh, potentials sorry using the four potentials uh, we will uh, derive the field strength tensor uh, and fields of the uh, accelerating charge particles. So, but before going to do this I want to make a short review about uh, what we have done last time. So, I want to clarify that the contour integrals we get last time in order to drive the uh, the Green's function. So, let us remember the last time. So, we have the Maxwell's equations and we can write the field strength tensor del alpha a beta del beta a alpha is 4 pi over c j beta. So, I am passing this fast. So, we have the following form del beta del alpha a alpha 4 pi over c j beta and for the Lorentz condition this is 0 and we have the four dimensional wave equation and we are trying to solve this for a given source. Source is the uh, moving charge particle moving an accelerating charge particle. So, what we have done we try to find that the Green's function. So, and on the right hand side we left a delta function and we use that the Fourier transform to solve this equation. So, we call this as a z the difference vector. So, we can write this dx minus x prime also. So, we try to find that the Green's function d of z. So, this is a just a summary of what we have done last time. So, all of them in your notes, lecture notes. So, dz is the four dimensional wave number integration of the Fourier transform of the Green's function minus i k dot z. So, basically we find that the, by plugging this function to the non homogeneous wave equation, we find the d of k. So, we find that the d of k minus 1 over k dot k and then using the Fourier transform we try to evaluate the d of z. So, I want to comment about this point. So, d of z was minus 1 over 2 pi to the fourth power d cube k e to the i k dot z minus infinity to plus infinity d k 0 e to the minus k 0 z 0 k 0 square minus k square. So, I pass very very quickly for that part because I want to concentrate about this point. So, what we did here we have two possible two residues here. So, if we plot imaginary k 0 and this part is the real k 0. So, we have the 
residues on the real axis. So that is minus k and plus k. So we have two possible residue integral here. So these are, so we are trying to calculate this, we did. So you can choose the, by lifting the axis, real axis by amount of small, small epsilon, where epsilon goes to zero. So you can evaluate the contour integral in this form, which we did last time. And so we apply the residue theorem and the integral is here clockwise direction. And when epsilon goes to zero, this is on the real axis. And for the contour part, for the contour part, in here, imaginary k0 is less than zero. If imaginary k0 is less than zero, that means that uh, this is minus imaginary part is, if it is less than zero, this is positive, but the i times the imaginary part will be negative. So this integral will be vanished, contour part of the integral will be vanished, and we call, and z0 have to be greater than zero, and z0 is nothing but uh, x0, x0 prime, and this should be greater than zero. That means that um, event occur then we observe because x0 is greater than x0 prime. x0 prime is the event co time coordinate of the event and x0 is the coordinate of the observation. So if z0 is greater than 0 and if the imaginary part of k0 is less than 0, this exponential is negative and when the r when the radius of the contour goes to infinity, all contour part is zero, and only we left with the the uh, integral with the real axis. And the result of the integral, result of the integral uh, was the following. So you don't have to be right those things. So I am making just a summary. So this has two possible. Uh, solutions. One is the retarded one, and that was equal to theta z0 over 8 pi square r from minus infinity to plus infinity dk e to the i z0 minus rk uh, minus e to the z0 plus rk. So in that choice, if you choose the contour in this way, uh, clockwise direction, z0 is greater than 0, r is also 2 times greater than 0. These are the definitions of the delta functions, and this is 0. And the opposite way is the following. You can choose that the contour in the following way. So you can lift down the axis by i epsilon and when i epsilon goes to zero this goes to fits on the real axis and if you choose that the contour other way around other way around then this is a uh, counterclockwise, you can apply the residue integral, but in that case, imaginary part of the k is greater than zero. So in order to make the exponential is negative, then z zero have to be less than zero. Okay, when imaginary x zero is greater than zero, z zero should be less than zero, then you can obtain the exponential part is negative. That means that the when contour goes to radius of the contour goes to infinity, all contour part goes to zero. And in that case, if you choose that the integral in that manner, you will obtain that the advanced Green's function. 
and that is uh, nothing but theta minus the zero uh, because in that case the zero is less than zero eight pi square over r and so then the integral will be the negative sign because actually the situation is the following for the residue integral if you perform the residue integral counterclockwise this is the positive values of the residues and if you perform the integral counterclockwise and then they should be the negative basically you will obtain the same integral but the sign will be the negative so dk so this should be positive e to the i z 0 plus r k this should be the negative i z 0 minus r k and I know for the advanced Green's function z 0 should be less than 0 that means that what what that means that z 0 is less than 0 r is positive but minus r is less than 0 this integral all the times is 0 because these are the definitions of the delta function and that term survive. So then using the property of the delta functions we obtain the invariant form of the invariant form, form of the uh, retarded and advanced Green's functions they are in the following form 1 over 2 pi theta x0 minus x0 prime and delta function of x0 minus x0 prime square and for the advanced one for the advanced one advanced Green's function 1 over 2 pi theta x0 prime minus x0 delta function of x0 minus x0 prime square. So I go very very quickly just to remember what we have done last time. Basically I want to stress about the contour integrals. Okay, If we perform the contour integral in the lower plane we have to choose that z0 is greater than 0 then the exponential will be what? 0 at the infinity. Therefore, the contour part will be 0. Okay, when you apply the residue integral, you will end up with the real part of the integration. If you perform the integral clockwise direction in the upper half of the plane, then the sign of the integral will be changed because the residue, this is from the residue theorem. And then the imaginary part of the k0 should be greater than 0. Therefore, z0 should be less than 0 in order to obtain that the exponential part of the integral is negative. Okay? So, in two choices, you are obtaining that the invariant form of the Green's function. So, Green's function will be valid under the condition of x0 minus x0 prime square is 0. And that is the equal to the what? In there are four dimensional quantities. They are what? They are the light cone conditions. So I will discuss about. And here x0 is greater than x0 prime. This doesn't affect it. When x0 is greater than x0 prime, this is 1. Theta function is 1. And this is the opposite case. In that case, x0 prime is greater than x0. And then theta function is again 1. Okay, so in that case, x0 is greater than x0 prime under the Lorentz transformation. This doesn't change, and in that in that other case, x0 prime is greater than x0. So now we can start the uh, radiation. So basically, we will try to evaluate that the four potential, four potential using the Green's function and using the four potential we will find that the uh, field strength tensor for a moving and accelerating charge particle. So on Wednesday we will we will do the applications. Lots of applications we can do. We can study that the Thomson scattering and cyclotron emission, branch round emission and 
radiation reaction force and also we can study with the Cherenko radiation. So now let us erase the, what we have done previously and uh, let us start to <coughs> calculation of <coughs> four potential using the Green's function. So what we have at hand, so we have the four potential A of alpha x. If we know that the Green's function that is equal to 4 pi over c, 4 dimensional space time integral of the convolution of the Green's function with the source. Source is the for current density. So this is the for potential. We have the Green's function. We will use that the retarded Green's function because we are on the stage that the event occurred and we observe. We are not going to use the mixture of them. Uh, mixture of the Green's function, uh, retarded and advanced Green's function. We are not going to do that. And last time I showed you that the, what is the current density of moving charged particle in four dimension. So that is J alpha for four dimensional uh, time and space coordinates that is equal to EC charge times speed of line integration through the proper time U alpha for velocity delta function in four dimension X minus R of tau. So this is the four dimensional current density. This is the four potential and we have the Green's function. We will try to evaluate this. So let us take this plug inside the integral and let us take the Green's function plug there. So at this stage we may have a longer uh, term, longer term of the long expression, sorry, long expression. So basically four potential will be four pi over C dx prime to the four. And Green's function, one over two pi theta function x zero minus x zero prime. Uh, delta function x0 minus x0 prime square and what else for current density so you can put the integral here if you like e over c d tau for velocity for velocity this is uh, u alpha which depends on the proper time and four dimensional delta function x minus r of tau. So this is the integral. So if you put the things. So this part is the Green's function, retarded Green's function and this is the current density. So this element here, four dimensional volume element is nothing but time coordinate times the spatial part, d cube x prime. And four dimensional of delta function is nothing but delta of the time coordinate x0 prime minus r0 tau times spatial part del x prime minus r of tau. So this is the time coordinate, this is the spatial space part.
So if you take the integral from dx0 prime, instead of dx0 prime, you will put r0 and here. And if you take the integral d cube x prime, instead of x prime, you will plug in r. So you have the delta functions depending on x prime, x0 prime minus r0, x prime minus r. If you take the integral through the x prime and x0 prime, you will obtain the following form. For potential, will be what? C's will be cancelled. And 4 pi, 2 pi cancel. And I think we will left with the only 2 times the charge. So if you perform the integral through the x0 prime and d cube x prime, you will left only the integral through the d tau proper time. So we have 4 velocity depending on tau. And if you perform the integral through the x0 prime and x prime, then only you have to do, instead of x0 prime, you have to substitute what? Uh, r0 tau. And, and what else? You have to substitute instead of x0 prime, out of time. So your result will be the following. Instead of x0 prime, you have to plug in r0, r tau, r tau, not r0 tau. r0 is the time coordinate, r is the spatial part, uh, space part. So that will be uh, So in here, in this presentation, and that presentation, there is a mistake. The mistake is not the time. These are not the time coordinate. These are the, all of them, OK? x minus x prime. And here also, x minus x prime. So that is nothing but x minus x prime. So x minus x prime square is equal to x minus x prime square is equal to x zero minus x zero prime square minus x minus x prime square. So there is no nuts here. So there are the difference vectors, difference of the four vectors between the x and x prime. So that is an important mistake. So when I write, I write incorrectly. I try to write the retarded and advanced Green's function quickly. And here, there should be x minus x prime. If you look at the lecture notes from the last time, they are x minus x prime. And the x minus x prime square is this. So basically here, for the x prime, you have to plug a r. So that should be delta x minus r of tau square. So this is the power potential. And the meaning of the is the following. When you take the integral through the tau, this integral will be non-zero when x minus r square is equal to 0. So x minus r tau square equal to 0, you have, we will have the non-zero for potential because the argument of the delta function have to be 0 in order to take the integral. And the meaning of this is the following. This happens at a certain point. This happened 
at a certain point. So as I wrote there, that is nothing but x0 minus r0 tau squared minus x minus r of tau squared have to be equal to 0. What is the meaning of this? Do you remember? What is the meaning of this? In order to get the non-zero four potential, then the, the argument of the delta function have to be zero. So these are the four-dimensional difference vectors. So this representation have to be equal to zero, and the open form of this, x zero minus r zero tau minus x minus r of tau have to be zero. What is the meaning of this? Do you remember that the time-like separation? space light separation and light light separation. This is representing the light light separation. We can communicate with the radiation in the, as a light light separation. So that happens at, in the following condition. So suppose that this is a space and suppose that this is the time and suppose that we are here and we have the light cones here and the uh, r of tau the location of the emitter is something like this r of tau so we can communicate this radiation so when the charge is has the work line like this it emits signals uh, and we are here we can see that the radiation or this case or that case in both cases x minus r of tau is square is equal to zero because this is the light-like separation and this is also light-like separation. But there is a small difference. One of them is the retarded, one the other is the advanced. Which point is the retarded, which point is the advanced? If you think about this, this is the location of the source, work light of the source, like a charge. And we are here and in space-time. And we can observe the light signals in as, in as what? Light like separation. So this is the light cone, this is the light cone. So if you compare this point and that point, the time is earlier and we can observe the signal later. But here the station is the opposite. Uh, we are earlier and the signal is later. Basically this point corresponds to the uh, retarded time. So x0 is greater than r of tau at some arbitrary tau we will call the retarded time so that will be the r of tau zero so basically when tau equal to equal to some tau zero some retarded time we will have the condition such that x minus r square is equal to zero that corresponds to the light light separation, light light separation, and we can then have the non zero for potential. So this whole stuff is equal to zero when tau equal to tau zero, and that is the uh, light cone condition. So light cone condition. So this expression is actually very nice because it tells us that uh, we can observe the signal, signals, radiation, okay, on the light cone condition. And the light cone conditions are these conditions, so 45 degrees in space and time. So we have two choices. One is the retarded, the other is the advanced. If the source is moving its own work line, if this is our work line, we can detect the signal when the charge here and that separation space-time is nothing but x0 r of tau at tau 0 minus x minus r squared at tau equal to 0. Okay? So, let us continue. So, so that process tells us that uh, we can obtain these signals on the condition of light cone condition. Okay. So 
event occur first, the charge here, then we can detect the signal, but when we detect the signal, that may be the charge here in different location in on word line. Now Now let us try to evaluate this integral. So okay, I know that this integral will be non-zero when we satisfy the light cone condition, but what is that integral? So basically we have to see very simple property of the delta function. You, again, you can look at the properties of the delta functions and one is in the appendix of the quantum physics book Gazarovich. Suppose that you have any f, f of x of the delta function is the f of x. Suppose that some x i's they are function is zero roots. They have some roots. Okay, some x i. Then that is equal to that is equal to summation to the i one to n number of roots delta function x minus x i divided by df over dx x equal to xi. So what does it tell us this? If our delta function has a function inside such that the arguments are 0 at x equal to xi, that is equal to delta function x at x1 and the slope of the function with respect to the x at x1. If there is another root x equal to 2, then the other one, delta x minus x2, derivative of the function with respect to the x, x equal to x2. Okay, this is a definition. You can prove this very easily looking at the uh, appendix of the Gazarovich. So, in our case, what is our f of x? What is our f of x? Our f of x is nothing but x minus r of tau square. Okay? So basically, basically the situation is the following. The situation is the following. Uh, our function f is x minus r of tau square and d of d tau d of d tau is equal to derivative of this d d tau of x minus r of tau square and the root of this function, where is the root of this function? If f is uh, x minus r of tau, the root is at what? Tau 0. So tau 0 is some point here on the light light separation. Okay? So our function f is this. And the root of this function is what? At tau equal to tau 0 this function is equal to 0. Okay? So basically in our application the situation will be the following. Delta function x minus r of tau square will be equal to what? We have only one root, only one root and that root is equal to tau equal to tau 0. That is equal to delta function tau minus tau 0 divided by derivative of this function with respect to tau evaluated at tau 0. I will put this in a moment. So what I need derivative of this function with respect to tau and evaluate this at tau equal to tau 0 because tau equal to tau 0 is the root of that function. Okay, that is equal to 0. So let me evaluate this derivative. This derivative is simple. That is equal to derivative of this function with respect to tau. So you have the interior derivative 
and the exponent 2 that will be minus from the interior 2 from the exponent x r of tau and you have to do for all components because this is four dimensional v of beta and the interior derivative of the dr is what the interior derivative of the r with respect to tau is the four uh, four velocity so that is v beta okay let me tell you the derivative again so you have two here and the sign interior is minus and what else you have derivative of the r with respect to the tau that is the uh, for velocity you have to do four by all components and then you have the what uh, scalar product of this and that in four dimension and you have to evaluate this at tau equal to tau zero from the definition of the delta function so we have one root that is tau equal to tau zero okay delta function tau minus tau zero and take the derivative of the function evaluate at this at tau equal to tau zero and this is that term and then take the absolute value of this this is the absolute value so you will obtain the following minus 2 x minus r of tau v of beta uh, r of tau so x minus r of tau beta v of beta which depends on tau and evaluated at tau equal to tau zero and this is close the absolute value so basically the element here delta x minus r of tau will be delta tau minus tau zero divided by this term and this term is nothing but the scalar product of the difference vector between the x minus r times the for velocity. Now let me write this and take the integral. So I am keeping it down. There are useful information in the up, upper term. So I let me try to evaluate the integral. So for potential then becomes uh, 2 times e d tau for velocity and d theta x0 minus r of tau and instead of that we can write delta tau minus tau 0 divided by divided by minus 2 x minus r of tau of beta v of beta absolute value and this should be evaluated at tau equal to tau 0 so this is the situation so we, now we can take the integral because we are along uh, delta function of theta delta function tau minus tau zero if you take the integral what we have to do instead of all taus we will put tau zero and the tau zero is the condition of the light light separation retarded time okay so that at which so the source emits the signal then the source changes position in its word line but we can get the signal okay we, that is the our communications with the light signals in the light cone that is 45 degrees with the vertical so these lines are the x equal to ct lines these lines this is the r location and this is the particles work line now let me try to write this expression in more clearly Uh, let us write once more a of alpha x 2 e d tau v of alpha tau the theta 
x0 minus r of tau delta function of theta at tau minus tau 0 divided by magnitude of this. So what is this x minus r of tau beta and somewhat with beta? This is nothing but the scalar product of the uh, four vectors. So you can write this as what? Minus 2 and these twos will be cancelled. That will be positive. So that is nothing but x of r of tau scalar product with v. And if we evaluate this integral, what we are going to obtain, instead of tau, we have to plug tau 0. And this is x0 is greater than r tau 0. This will be 1. So then you will obtain that the four potential, four potential is e times v of alpha tau divided by what? Divided by four velocity dot x of r of tau evaluated at retarded time tau zero. Okay, this is simple. Okay, we can we evaluate the integral very easily. Now, now we can put this in a very nice form. We can put this for potential very nice form. Let us put the nice form and then we can give a break. So basically, here the summation through the beta and beta is nothing but the four scalar, four dimensional scalar product. And if you evaluate this, the scalar product, what is this? V dot x minus r of tau zero, let's say tau zero, because tau is evaluated as tau zero. And this is equal to, this is equal to v zero x0 r0 at tau 0 minus v dot x r of tau 0. This is the definition of the uh, scalar product in four dimension. v0 is the time coordinate of the four velocity. x0 minus r0 is the difference of the time coordinates and v dot x minus r is the space parts, spatial parts. So this is the thing we have to evaluate. But at the same time, I know one thing, one thing. x0 minus r0, I know one thing for the x0, for the x0 minus r0. So look at here. What, what is the r light cone separation? x minus r squared at tau equal to tau 0 have to be 0. So the open form is x0 minus r0 at tau equal to 0 minus x minus r squared at tau equal to 0 have to be 0. And I know that this is nothing but, this is nothing but, what is this? Difference between our space point, spatial point and the source. This is R. That is the difference between the source and us in space. So that is nothing but R square. If this is R square, this should be R square because the result is zero. Okay. So that tells us that that tells us that we can write this right answer of, of the expression in the following: v zero instead of x zero minus R zero. I can put r, r, and minus for space part of the four velocity that x minus r. What is this x minus r? That is the again r magnitude of this r, but the direction is arbitrarily. So let us call this as a. Uh, that r n hat. So n hat is the 
unit vector between what? N hat is the unit vector between the uh, position of the source and our position. So that is you can write this. You can write this as a what? Uh, X. So this is nothing but X minus R over X minus. R magnitude times X minus R. Magnitude. So the first term is the N unit vector. This part is the N unit vector. And this part is the R. So this expression x minus r is equal to n unit vector times the r. Okay. So n unit vector is the unit vector between what? Source and the r location. So one another thing we can write one more step. What is v0 and v? They are what? Components of the four velocity. So v0 is nothing but gamma c. v is gamma v. So, small v. So, that is nothing but gamma v dot r n hat. So, remember that the four velocity, components of the four velocity is time coordinate is gamma c, space coordinate is gamma v. And basically, if you take the gamma c r parenthesis, that is nothing but 1. If you say take the gamma C R parenthesis, you will have V over C that is beta and that will be beta dot N. Beta is equal to V over C. Okay? So, the basically, we are finding a very interesting result. And let me write this result here. So, for potential, for potential has the elements of what? Which depends on the, let's say, space and time. And has the elements of what? charge times the four velocity evaluated at tau equal to tau zero obeying the light light separation divided by gamma C R one minus beta dot N. Okay, this is the four potential. So then I will write the elements of the four potential. So what are those things? So what is done? First, you can put alpha equal to zero. So when alpha is equal to zero, what is the zero component of the four potential? Scalar potential. Okay, that is the scalar potential, and e times. So zero component of the four velocity is what? Gamma c, gamma c divided by gamma c r 1 minus beta dot n evaluated at tau equal to tau 0. So this gamma c is cancelled. So then a 0 should be the scalar potential that is nothing but e over r 
1 minus beta dot n. Evaluate it at tau equal to tau 0. Is it something we know? If the charged particle is moving at low speeds, beta is equal to 0. This is the what? Scalar potential of the charge. Okay. And let us look at the other components. So, alpha 1 to 3, let's say for the 1 to 3 as a a vector and that is equal to e times instead of alpha 1 to 3 we can write gamma v divided by gamma cr 1 minus beta dot n evaluated at tau, tau, tau equal to tau 0 gamma s will be cancelled v over c is beta and we obtain beta times what? beta times e over e over r 1 minus beta dot n evaluated at tau equal to tau 0 so what we see here so v over c is beta the rest is e times e divided by r y, r over e over r times 1 minus beta dot n so what is this term what is this term e over r 1 minus beta dot n that term is nothing but the scalar potential so the vector potential is equal to beta times the scalar potential. If it is non-relativistic, beta goes to zeros, vector potential is zero, and the potential is the ordinary scalar potential. But it is relativistic, this kind of potentials we have. We have both scalar and vector potential. It is natural because we have the, if the charge is moving, or if we are rest, we are seeing some magnetic fields. Therefore, they should be what? Uh, vector potential in the medium and therefore the name of these potentials are called Leonard we heard we heard potentials okay so basically you have now two ways of calculating the fields. You know that the scalar potential and vector potential, so you can find the fields as B as curl of E and the electric field as minus gradient of the scalar potential minus del E over del T, del vector potential over del T. This is one way. And the other one, try to calculate the field strength tensor F alpha beta okay because we have the four potential here so basically if the charge is moving high at high speeds the scalar potential and the vector potential we have we have the electric field and magnetic field we will find this in the next time using this we can study that the radiation from the accelerated charge particle so i think the leonard is a mining engineer lived in Paris uh, at the 18th century. So, so he worked in the electrical engineering department so and work on the mining as work as a mining engineer also. So basically we find the important tool for the study of the radiation from the moving and accelerated charge and Next hour, I will find it the field strength tensor. Then we will start the applications. We will start to study the radiations. So let us give a break. Then we can continue.